George, you're muted. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome for coming coming today. We're really proud to have everybody here. We'll be starting in uh, th two minutes. Um, just want everyone to know if you can put your uh, name, your email, and your major in there. And um, if you're a student, um, your name, your email, your major, and what year your graduation is. And then also, if you're a staff person, if you can put in the chat your name, your title, um, your office, uh, your email, and if you have the um, the URL or the website for yourself as well. So uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes, uh, maybe two or three minutes from now. Um, good to see everybody here. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have a lot of freshmen coming in uh, right around now, and I'd love to have this, but I'm glad to be able to record this so we can be able to put this out as well. So uh, give me a few minutes, everybody, and we'll start in like two minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so glad to have everybody here today. I really want to thank everybody who's decided to participate, all the offices and departments of Georgia State to make sure we had this event. Um, we've done this several times um, in person, and we also did it uh, virtually over the summertime of uh, bringing um, people together, um, especially around this time with um, the pandemic and us on virtual. We wanted to make sure that students um, are able to have resources and support. Um, so, my name again is George Greenwich. I'm a PhD candidate here at Georgia State in the Department of Sociology. I'm also president of the Greatest Minds uh, organization, which has been around for six years, as long as I've been here, um, to um, actually help students um, be all they can be and also get resources and accesses uh, to services here at GSU, but also talk about race, class, and gender. Um, before we get started, uh, just want everyone, if you can, um, just to give a face on here, because I think, you know, as we do these meetings, I know it's hard, but um, it'll be really wonderful if everyone could uh, show their face right now. That'd be really great. And um, before we get started, um, just love to have uh, maybe five or six uh, students that just like to say their name and their major and um, what year they are. So go for it. Who wants to go first? <laughs> And they know I'm gonna call them out like Joe and Kate and Stephanie. Go for it. <laughs> um, well, I'll go first. My name is Sarah Anderson and I'm a nursing major here at GSU. So health science, cause you had to get into the nursing program, but yeah. Thank you. Just a couple more, just for, for some faces for people, go for it. Hi, Joey. Uh, I'm a biology major and I'm graduating in 2024. Thank you. What's up, Joey? Um, I'm Kate. I'm a biology major as well, and I'm also uh, going to graduate in 2024. Right. Couple more people. I just want them to know who's in the room. Three more. Three more. Ms. Burke, Nina. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Nina, and I'm a public health major, and I'll be graduating in 2024. Thank you. Two more, two more, so we can get started. <laughs> Hi, 
Danny, did you already go, Danny? Hi, my name is Danny, and I am public health. So, like, I didn't get into nursing program yet either, but I'll be doing nursing major. All right, cool. And two more? One more. We'll do one more. Alexa! <laughs> you always... People always call you Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm Alexa. I'll be graduating 2024, and I'm a chemistry major. That's good. Um, so this is really a quick quiz for everybody before we get started. Is um, you guys? A lot of you guys in here are freshmen. What has been your biggest uh, hurdle this semester so far? Just to get, we have a lot of people that run the offices. So I just want you guys just to speak freely right now. Two people. Danny, Sarah, go for it. <laughs> um, I think time management would be one of my big things because um, in high school, they kind of just told you what to do and they kind of just expected these assignments on these specific dates. But with doing everything online, we kind of have to, they put it all out on Monday. You kind of have to know when these assignments are gonna be put, like when you turn it in. And yeah, it's just putting it all down and like a planner for me <laughs> and having all the assignments written out and figuring out when to turn it in and just, that part has been hard, time management. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, we have one more. Is Danny, you want to go or anybody else? Um, I have Sarah um, because, like, since all the professors are using iCollege, but on top of that, they're using, like, different, like, portals and websites, I think it's important to, like, keep which websites and, like, which one to go and, then, like, write down, like, the due dates and deadlines and assignments and, like, like, I think it's um, better to like plan ahead because um, since like iCollege still informs that when this is due, like I think it's important to like plan ahead and like not to procrastinate because like this is different from high school. So I think it's Danny, important to like- How different is it from high school? Is it very different? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I having this like lifestyle, like, this habit of like keeping planners since middle school. So like, I think it's just like, it just stuck to me like that I like kept it until college, but I think college, like you have to be more precise and like, um, I think interacting since like due to COVID, I think interacting with the um, professors by emails or Zoom calls are important too. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, young people on the call, our students, um, we have at least 10 offices here that are gonna tell you what they do on campus. And um, it's very interesting since a lot of you have not been to campus. Some of you have done a quick tour with me. Um, so we're here to help you just figure out ways how you can get services on here. Um, we have a full library that's there for you. We have a full writing studio. We have an entrepreneurship center. We have a Dean School's office. We have an art center. And so we have um, these people have very graciously said, when I said put the call out, they said sign me up. So this is a very um, special opportune time. And I'm so glad that I'll be able to put this on YouTube a little later so people can share it and use it as well. So we have a list. Um, who wants, who's the person first on the list? They'll go for four and a half minutes and we'll uh, keep on going. Thank you. Hey everyone, um, I serve as the assistant director of student wellness. And so my office is actually located in 75 on 75 Piedmont, um, the old citizens trust bank building. So uh, thrilled to hear that there are so, so many public health majors on here. That is my, my graduate work was um, a master's in public health from Emory. Um, then I finished my PhD here at Georgia State University, but great to see so many interest, so much interest in public health. Um, obviously, through this pandemic, I think now everybody knows what public health is potentially. Uh, so that's that's wonderful to hear. So 
I'm here representing Integrated Health Services. And so Integrated Health Services includes the health clinic, the counseling center, health promotion, that's my office, student victim assistance, nutrition services, along with the mind body clinic. So what I hope everybody is doing is following our social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We are Be Well GSU. So it's B E W E L L G S U. And and the reason I say to follow us on social media is because I think it's the quickest and easiest way to get to all of us. Each of those areas that tried, we all do a different website. I I put student health promotion website in the chat. Um, and, and from there, you can get to everybody else. But the great thing about integrated health services is, you know, you might go for one thing and you, you might go over to the, the health clinic and, and say, you know, I'm just feeling under the weather. Maybe I've got, you know, a cough and sniffles or, or whatever um, might be going on. Maybe when they maybe when you're meeting with somebody over there, you talk a little bit more and it's like, uh, you know, maybe it would be helpful if I talk to a counselor. And maybe I'm experiencing, you know, a little bit more than a physical, physical um, symptom. And maybe there are some other things going on and maybe we're experiencing, which is very common right now for of us to be experiencing some anxiety or some depression over all the changes. I mean, entering college is a huge change. You all have entered college at unprecedented times that most of us, none of us um, can really um, fully understand. We know that it's monumental to enter college. Um, but I think somebody had mentioned on here, just as you're you know, all of this is real different from being in person with all of your classes. And so there's a ton of assignments and then there's probably different platforms people are using. And um, so it, it's a lot. It's a lot. So uh, whatever whatever it is that you need, we are there. Um, somebody asked, what's the best way for students to reach a counselor? Um, someone said that no one returned their call. I, I would say, again, make that phone call um, and, and leave another message. If you don't get that, please feel free to email me directly and I can help you. My email is tturner58. And so I'll put that over in the, in the box. But again, it's tturner8 at gsu.edu. Uh, we're doing our best. Uh, the counselors are seeing students one-on-one -on -one through um, Teams, um, and you know, so online. So there's no face-to-face, -face or I say, you know, in person, in person. But definitely having those meetings online. So please, yes, continue to to reach out. I wanted to share another service that we have. It's called Together All. So together, the word together all. Dot com. And what it is, it's, a, it's an online platform where students can talk to each other um, about, you know, about how they're feeling, their mental health, you know, our mental health. How are we feeling about things? There's courses students can take on there, uh, brief, brief courses, you know, to learn more about how sleep impacts our stress level. Or, you know, I know that everyone mentioned on here or many people mentioned on here some time management, taking a short class, um, you know, or reading a little bit about time management and some skills, that's that's definitely an option on there. But what it also provides is a platform for students to talk student to student um, and share, right, how they're feeling in these unprecedented times and, and, and be able to just share and, and talk to other students about how that might be. So I encourage you to go on there. It's it's a platform that if, if somebody were to say that they were going to harm themselves or somebody else. It is actually monitored by, monitored by counselors. So someone would be flagged if, even if they're saying that they're going to hurt themselves, or hurt somebody else. Um, so counselors are monitoring that and then also connecting students with, you know, other resources that they might not, they might need. Georgia State has a plethora of, of um, services. The challenge that is there's so many sometimes that it's, as one, you know, as a student yourself, it's often hard to know what those services are. So thank you for participating in this. Thank you for learning about integrated health and all the other services that are available. Um, yeah, just seeing that list is, is wonderful. The other, the other great thing is that, please keep in mind that we're talking to one another 
And so if you go to the Dean of Students and you need something, you can go there and just say, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on and this is how I'm feeling. They'll be able to help connect you with other resources, whether it be the counseling center or something else. So please do that. I also wanted to just remind everybody as first year students, you should have received a, an email about alcohol EDU and the sexual assault prevention for undergraduates course. So those are two mandated courses, all students at Georgia State, along with at a university system of Georgia school are required to take again. So that's alcohol EDU and the sexual assault prevention for undergraduates. Again, our goal is to have a, a, a healthy, a healthy um, Georgia State. And we know that alcohol tends to be um, a, a part of a lot, not all, but a lot of students um, college experience. And the reality is for those students, which is a, a small percentage of those students who utilize alcohol in excess or to their detriment, those are usually the cases that we hear about. Again, that's a small minority of people um, who choose to use alcohol in an unhealthy way. But the, the course is there also to help you help others. Um, so the reality is you'll probably come in contact with students who do choose to use alcohol in unhealthy ways. How can you help them? Or, you know, maybe you know somebody who has been struggling with alcoholism, um, whether in your family or or friends. We do have a recovery group on campus, and so they meet on Monday nights at 630. So please, again, follow our page on social media to learn about those those times and what the recovery program might have available. So I'm going to pause. I know that we're moving on to the next person. So welcome. Please follow us, Be Well GSU. Um, we are here for you. And if there's anything that you need individually, my name is, T is Tammy Turner, and it's tturner58 at gsu.edu. Thank you. All right, well, I'll go next. Hi, I'm, I'm Brian Sinclair from the University Library, and I'm in my office, and the library is open for business. So. First, I would like to say we miss you all terribly. We have about 10,000, 11,000 students in the library, usually on a day like today. And I guess there are fewer than 1,000 people in here total, but um, I want you to know we're open. The library is open uh, normal hours, so 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. We only close for five hours in the middle of the night, so we're open until 2 a.m. And if you are at home and you've got siblings or people in your house like I do and you cannot think and you need a place to get away and everybody's fine with it, um, I you can come out to the library. In fact, all six campuses are open, uh, but the Atlanta campus is open till 2 a.m. Uh, our numbers are kind of low late at night, so we'd love to have you come out. We are open for quiet study, and if you just need to get away and take a break, I think you can do it safely. Um, we are, we've done everything we can to make this space safe, and in fact, if you need some wipes to wipe down the surface or your keyboard or whatever you would like, we can help you with that. We're, we're glad to help you. Um, uh, I'll just some housekeeping chores a little bit. I found out today if you want to park in G deck, which is the park closest to the library. If you want to come downtown, um, it is it is two dollars after four o'clock if you have a, 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 a student permit and it's totally free to park in G deck on the weekends. So. Um, I, I say Saturday and Sunday, if you need some quiet study time, we're the place. The Wi-Fi is good and all the printers are working and there are 300 PCs on the floor right now ready for you to use. So uh, just FYI, um, if you look, if you go to the library website, um, we are offering a, a express pickup service, similar to if you were to uh, call in an order at the restaurant, we'll meet you down at your car, you can pop your trunk, We'll put the books in your trunk and let you close it or whatever you want. If you're on your bicycle, we'll put it in your uh, basket. And if you want to walk up, we've got a walk up service uh, as well. If you go to the library homepage, you'll, you'll see that under express pickup. Uh, we are offering curbside car service at Atlanta campus and Dunwoody. And at the Atlanta campus, you can, that's Monday through Friday. Um, so check that out. If there are any questions about any services we have, you can chat with a librarian live on our homepage. Um, uh, chat, I think it says talk with librarian or chat with librarian. So instead of getting into any details about how to do this, if you just, there's somebody there, a real human being, not a robot, 
not an AI program, but a real live caring librarian is on online uh, uh, many, many hours until the evening to help you. Uh, so take advantage of that. Um, and uh, there are, of course, workshops going on. If you want to learn R or Python or all these things you may not know anything about, take a look at the workshops on our homepage. Uh, maybe learn something new. Librarians and our data librarians are always available to help you. And uh, if you do come out to the campus library, uh, we really, really appreciate your practicing good, safe behaviors. We have had a, 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 a few issues with groups of students meeting and doing group projects. We really encourage you not to meet as groups in the library, but we really hope you will come and do individual uh, quiet study and, and collaborate through Teams and WebEx and other ways. Um, and wear your mask. Um, it's very important uh, if you do come out. We are trying to be very kind and understanding, but we have to work on this together. We cannot meet in groups and the library seems to encourage group work. So, and we love it normally, but this is not a good time to do that. So if you're gonna come out to campus, uh, be in the mindset that you're gonna do quiet study as an individual. And you may get to see another human being and wave at them, touch elbows or something like that. But be in that mode if you could. We really appreciate it. But um, uh, I put my information in the chat. Um, as I say, I'm Brian Sinclair. Uh, if you have any questions about the library, we're here for you. And as, as I say, the chat on our homepage, uh, you get to chat with a real person. Um, and so please take advantage of that. And thanks. And thank you, George, for, uh, for hosting this and doing this. We really appreciate it. No problem. I can't wait to get it out on social media. Brian, you had two quick questions. One yeah. is um, regarding, um, can you tell these students that there's a special librarian for each major? And someone asked how to get in the library. They have no idea they're freshmen. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make it quick. So the library south entrance is open. There is signage from Decatur Street. If you come out, I take MARTA every day. So I'm back on the train. Um, I, I walk down Decatur Street uh, to the Library South building and I just come in and there's a guard there and it's a safe place to be. So I I I'm taking MARTA again and I, find I find it's okay. But if you drive, park in GDEC after four o'clock on weekends um, and come in the Library South entrance, which is connected to GDEC or from Decatur Street, there's, there's new signage that it'll direct you. Um, the other question, um, is uh, about your special librarian. So if you are uh, have been here a few years and you have a major and you you have a, 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 a discipline, a subject area, you have your own librarian and they're listed on our homepage. If you go to, I, I'm not on the homepage right now, but it, you can uh, click on find a librarian and you can find your specific college or department's uh, personal librarian. And that's a good person to know, especially if you're doing research within your discipline. So I think there's a chemistry major on here, our chemistry librarian, our science librarian, outstanding. They're all outstanding. Um, uh, yes, I see lots of biology and chemistry. So, but yes, uh, our public health person is fantastic. They're all great. So uh, get to know your librarian, um, maybe reach out to them via email right now. That'd be the best. We normally ask you to come in and meet them, but uh, if you'll reach out to them, that'd be great. Is it free? Who is this? Everything the library offers is free unless you don't bring it back. Then we have to go after you and ask you to pay for it. But everything the library provides is free. And feel free to reach out to me offline. I'm going to put my email address one more time in the chat. Feel free to email me and reach out if you have any questions or chat with a librarian on the homepage. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Katina Rains with University Career Services, and I'm pleased to be speaking with you on today. I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Awesome. Okay. So I'm with the Georgia State University Career Services, and we connect with you virtually um, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.15 p.m., and you can go to gsu.handshake.com in order to schedule for an appointment with any of our career counselors. 
also we have walk-in hours. We are on campus. You can come into our um, center um, Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're located in Student Center West, Suite 260. And we also have career services available at all of our perimeter campuses as well. So we welcome you to reach out to us if you have if you need any type of assistance with mock interviews or creating your resume or creating a LinkedIn account, et cetera, we're here to serve you. I'm going to highlight a couple of our great events that we have coming up for the fall. Virtual part-time jobs. As you see, we have several dates for September and October and November. And you can also find these events registered in Handshake, where you can come and see what type of employers are hiring for part-time work if you need a little extra cash. And also, not only due to the pandemic and just the evolving of the workforce, but also seasonal positions are still hiring if you just want something for the holidays or maybe the last couple of months of the year. We do have those available as well. So we welcome you to join us. All of our events are held virtually at this time. On Fridays from 9 to 10, we have Career Chat and Brew. This is where you have we, the career services professionals, as well as students and industry professionals join to talk about various um, topics and it's open and formal conversation. So we welcome you to join us for Career Chat and Brew on Fridays. Um, in addition to um, other career development services, we have several upcoming events, such as job search in the COVID-19 environment. I'm certain that you have had a lot of questions or maybe attended a lot of events, um, but in order to properly prepare for your job search, feel free to join us. It will be informal where we will present great tips to help you in this COVID-19 environment, as well as with all of our events, we have the ability to also ask questions and we'll be glad to assist you. We have a graduate school workshop series um, that's coming up, and this is going to be specific um, catering to LinkedIn for those of you who are interested in graduate school or may attend graduate school at the moment. Um, we welcome you to join us for this workshop series where we will speak about you know getting connected as well as your job search and um, just networking properly for the type of work that you are seeking. Okay. What Wednesdays? We had one this past Wednesday for internships and co-ops. Next week, we will have STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics um, employer showcase. And it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if you log into Handshake, you should be able to see the um, employers who will actually present um, for 40 minutes and also have it open for questions and answers as well. But most importantly, to connect to a workforce professional could possibly be a mentor or you know lead to a career most important okay how to apply for graduate school we leave no stone unturned uh, we not only assist you in finding work whether it's part-time or you're looking for your career college to career but if you're looking to apply for grad school we also have a, um, a session that is coming up on october the 13th and this will be held from 1 to 2 p.m and it's just speaking about the research and organized planning and the process for applying to a graduate program. Again, we have another Who What Wednesday. This is the Associate Degree Showcase. Um, for those of you who have an associate degree or will be obtaining one um, soon, you can see what type of opportunities are out there for you. And we also have another internship um, showcase that we are featuring as well. Uh, we have a virtual graduate school fair. So remember, we're preparing you for grad school, applying in the processes where we're going to have several graduate schools that will be available virtually. So you can connect and uh, reach out to representatives and find out their process for attending um, graduate programs. And our last to what Wednesday is government and nonprofit. Um, this is going to be an excellent showcase as well. For those of you who have a particular interest in working for government agencies, get virtual career fair ready. We had one um, early September and it went very well. So we're rolling it back to Tuesday, November 3rd um, for you to attend. And you can definitely jump in and ask questions, um, especially if any of you have been in your career fair process. Um, this would be a great time to get additional tips or maybe ask questions that would be helpful in the forward. Okay, November 6th, we have the large Georgia State University Tech Talent Fair. 
Um, this is going to be from 11 to p.m. and we're sponsoring this with the Robert College of Business and ourselves, University of Services. So we invite you all to come and take a look and see what opportunities will be available. And we have our statewide um, college and employers job fair will be on Tuesday, November the 10th. And that's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Again, you can find all of these events in um, Handshake and you can feel free to reach out to us as well if you have any questions or need additional information. And I will place my um, email in the chat box. And we have success strategies for remote internships. Um, a lot of great opportunities have been available to students um, for interns, um, especially not having the ability to travel. So there are more opportunities that are out there. So we want you to definitely to connect with us. As you see, we try to program and have all of our different events um, supportive of one another. So you can get everything that you need at any of our events. And again, you're more than welcome to connect with us personally also. And lastly, we have an international job search workshop, and this is to educate international students on United States um, job searching customs and processes. And this will also be a very open forum, so you can ask questions and you have the resources to assist you in your, in your job search. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen at the moment and see what we've got here in the chat box. Okay. Okay, lots of students need help with writing a resume and using portfolio. Who do they talk to in career services? You can um, either schedule direct with a career via handshake or you can call 404-413-1820. We have staff that are readily available to assist you and next to the proper counselor. That's a great question. There are any other questions for this time? I'm going to be around throughout the um, event, of course, and um, this is an awesome opportunity to learn additional information so I can also support students as well as find support for myself. So I'm glad that you all are attending and I hope that you are having a great semester and um, we're here to support you in any way possible. Excellent. Thank you so much, Katina, and really glad that uh, we have a number of persons who have come together for, for today's uh, growth opportunity. My name is Kirk Johnson, a student advisor uh, in student affairs advisor in the leadership programs office. Uh, con considering that a few minutes, so I'll get I'll get right to the point. Yeah, I will share uh, a screen when we talk about leadership. Perhaps there are several things that come to mind. Uh, our focus is on creating opportunities uh, that support uh, student growth and the leadership development. We're located in Student Center West, Suite 475. Certainly, we are in, a, in a, an increasingly virtual world, so certainly there are other means by which to stay connected. One of which, uh, by email, is simply using uh, my name, uh, Kirk Johnson at gsu.edu. Of course, for our uh, office, there are several ways to stay connected and we encourage uh, students and for us all actually to stay connected. Uh, on Instagram, if your phone is handy, please uh, follow us, GSU Leadership. We're located on PIN. There is one of the platforms you will go to to connect and get a listing of our series of training sessions, programs, events, things of that sort. So I encourage you to go to, to PIN. Uh, then also another convenient path is leadership.gsu.edu. So I just want to mention these uh, means to stay connected up front. I'd be happy to uh, share more as as necessary. So I'm just moving on. So the subject of leadership is 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 something that is global. It's not something new. Uh, and, and in fact, although if we were to move around the room, we'll find that there will be a range of definitions, and at the same time, you'll find some common themes. The point here is that leadership is valued uh, in society, and in fact, it is something that uh, we often hear talked about in the media, for example, and with, with the interest of, in interest of time, I won't, won't go into any detail, but if you were to scan uh, media outlets, you'll see topics like leadership in the time of COVID-19, from Microsoft to PepsiCo, employees say these companies have the best leadership teams uh, to move across 
uh, some of the other stories is also world leaders respond to George Floyd protests. Community leaders want change, demanding answers. My point here is leadership is as clear and present today and as important. Uh, do I dare to say a, a, a statement like as almost as important as the air we breathe? I mean, certainly nothing compares to the importance of air, right? But the point here is leadership is present. It's, it, is, um, it is here and we either consciously or unconsciously use it. The leadership programs office says, let's be conscious. Let's build it intentionally. Let's uh, understand when it's when it's used and ways that we can use it in, in ways that produce positive results, both for the person uh, who is applying that leadership and those that are impacted by it. So we have an, an, a fantastic team of, of persons here. I won't go through the list. You can go to our website to learn more uh, about our team. To share a little bit about our uh, programming, uh, one of those programs that's really been very well received is Leadership DNA. It's about focusing on who I, the person, whether I'm a first year student, uh, a, a fourth year student, or a graduate student, a doctoral student. Uh, how do I how do I better understand me? Become more self aware. How do how can I be more intentional about understanding my own leadership philosophy and how that factors into both my academic progress and my career development? Leaders communicate. Leadership essential. Leadership compass. Those are my additional. Uh, training sessions and, and pro programming that's focused on intentionality in terms of our leadership development. There are other platforms like the Men's Leadership Experience, the, the next one of which is uh, next week, Wednesday, where we're going to focus more specifically on what is this thing we call leadership and does it differ when we talk about men uh, compared to women uh, leadership and things of that sort, if you can use the term comparison. It's, it's, a, it's an important conversation to have and one that we will uh, explore with a panel of both male and female uh, leaders. The Women's Leadership Experience, which uh, launched its new season about two weeks ago, it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for women to come together to discuss uh, topics of, of, of leadership. What you also find among both of these leadership programs is that while there may be a focus on one sex or the other, it is open to, to everyone. Uh, among other just gonna move that on the side here. Uh, there are some personality assessments. The True Colors and the Clifton Strengths. By the way, the Clifton Strengths Finder, uh, which focuses on identifying your top five strengths and learning more about how you can leverage this in your personal life, in your academic life, and in your role as a person of influence as a leader. And uh, it's also incorporated in the leadership DNA. True Colors is another uh, in, uh, another assessment that's available to students. and it there are some options in terms of how you can explore the self discovery self awareness you can either do it through a program like leadership dna and others or just through a one on one coaching session with a member of the leadership programs uh, team and there are several community programs uh, this week we have uh, leaders communicate we also have a meet and greet something that we're introducing for the first time uh, it's this coming Wednesday. The first one is at 3 p.m. and it's going to be in person, Urban Life Plaza, Decatur Street. Uh, there also will be uh, two follow-ups that will be virtual, so we're giving you options. Similarly, there are programs that we offer that are both in person and uh, also both in person and uh, virtual. So, with that said. Uh, there's more to share, but time will not allow. I will I will close on this. The lead team is one of the organizations, student organizations, with whom uh, we mentor and we we uh, partner through the through the through the semester. So I encourage you to learn a little bit more about this particular student organization. It's another opportunity to network and connect with other students who are interested and committed to their development. Okay, is lead team a job? So I see the question. It is, while it's not a job, it's certainly an opportunity to develop those skills. And those skills, the skill set, the references and things of that sort, I believe opens the door for uh, additional opportunities. It's interesting that you'd ask a question uh, because we, at least I, uh, I'm exploring whether that's something um, that I should present to the leadership of our office for us to consider that uh, for some time in the future. So I like the idea. 
Thank you very much for the opportunity. Are there any questions? All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Brown noise, so if you're not speaking, please mute yourself. Thank you. All right, so I am Zeke. I'm with the Dean of Students Office. I'm an assistant dean. With me is Fallon, and she'll introduce herself as well. And we are glad to be here today. Uh, what I wanted to do was just bring up this our website really quickly so you kind of understand who we are and what we do. Um, oftentimes, we hear people describe our office as the Google of campus. Um, and so we, we will own that. Uh, and so it's kind of like what Tammy mentioned earlier. If you don't know or don't have an answer, you come to the Dean of Students office and we can either provide that service for you directly in the office or be the liaison to that particular service. So who we are, we are about providing access, equity and inclusion. Um, and our mission is to make sure that we are helping all of you as students be engaged and successful members here on campus. So some of the things we do is provide tons of resources for our students. We obviously are the ones who um, go through and uh, I'm sorry, I hear background noise. If you uh, if someone's typing, please mute yourself. Thank you. Uh, we are also the ones who have the student code of conduct. So we will update the student code of conduct and make sure we are educating people about the code. We follow up with students if they're the ones who violate the code of conduct. Um, we also provide preventive education resources for students. So that means that if a, we understand that students are violating the policy, maybe they are having uh, arguments with their roommates, fights, or uh, having trouble making decisions, we'll create programs surrounding those particular areas. So on our website, you will see here, and you will go to deanofstudents.gsu.edu, and we'll be able to provide you with tons of service there. So as I mentioned with the code of conduct, you'll see all of these areas here. Um, we have hearing boards, so we uh, advise the student judicial board, which is a judicial branch of the student government association. We have a lot of students who are interested in being attorneys actually join the board. We have tons of students who aren't. So, for example, I did a, um, a reference for one of my students the other day who's in dental school, um, but he was on the student judicial board. So we are uh, always uh, open to taking all sorts of students. And of course, we also house the sexual misconduct policy. So our goal is to educate our students about sexual misconduct, which you will see on our website as well. Uh, and lastly, um, uh, for um, my portion is we have virtual education, virtual activities um, through our CEC program, which is the Creating Effective Citizens program. And when I click on it here, um, you will also see information about the program itself. And so our goal is to create effective citizens through this program and we'll get you critical thinking skills. We'll give you opportunities to provide back to the community. Um, we're going to teach effective communication and interpersonal strategies and offer on engagement and leadership opportunities for students. And so we have a series of programs, which you'll find here connected to the Pounce Pillars, as well as the NAICS competencies, which are uh, your career development competencies, things you're going to need when you leave Georgia State. And we break up our programs per month. So see how you can look on here and see what we offer for each month. We're in September here. So we're hoping that you join some of our programs. Uh, one of those programs will be MVP, which is men and violence prevention. So some of my uh, those who identify as male, if you would like to join this particular initiative, it's identifying why we have uh, toxic masculinity and break down those particular uh, learned behaviors so we can create a different society to impact everyone. Uh, so I would highly recommend going to the to get as much information as possible. We can provide you with all this information here. Uh, so in lieu of time, I will be quiet and turn it over to Fallon, who will talk about student assistance. Thanks, Jeray. Um, so as she mentioned, um, we do provide a lot of student assistance in the office, um, and that can vary in terms of what it looks like. Oh, all right, all right. I'm going to say the feedback is happening. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the major things, uh, especially since the pandemic has occurred, um, is we uh, recognize that students are often experiencing a lot of financial challenges. Um, and so part of that is students can request um, assistance, emergency assistance, um, and that can be found on our website. 
Um, and so you can apply if you're having a hard time, maybe paying bills um, and what have you. And so that is a resource that's been really helpful for students. Of course, we want students to be very careful if they utilize that process, because again, um, we recognize that students are in need. Um, however, um, we have thousands and thousands of students who submitted requests. So we wanna make sure um, that if you're truly having an emergency situation, that this would be the most appropriate route to go. Um, also for students who may be experiencing homelessness or food insecurity, we often work with those students to identify both on and off campus resources. Um, and so just depending on what the student needs are, again, we're kind of doing some troubleshooting. We also recognize that um, because students may be experiencing some type of challenges outside the classroom that often uh, kind of finds its way in the classroom. So if we need to talk about options, for instance, there is a policy called emergency withdrawal. Again, same premise, if you're having a non-academic emergency that's preventing you from being able to complete your coursework, um, then that is a process that you could con consider um, that will help protect your GPA. Um, also, if students are experiencing other types of accidents or injuries, uh, sometimes we're, notifi we're notified if a student is not able to contact their instructors, um, then we can do so to let them know that an emergency has occurred. Uh, and when time permits, the student will follow up with them. Um, let's see. Also, just again, getting students connected with the institution, given that Georgia State is so large, um, we realize that sometimes it can be challenging trying to navigate. Uh, and so our office is here to assist you with those matters. So sometimes students will come to us uh, for issues with if they have an, um, a question about financial aid or student accounts or uh, grades, things like that, we kind of get it all. So we're helping you to get to the right department if we're not the department to resolve your issue. Um, someone mentioned health insurance. Um, our office currently does not um, assist with health insurance per se. Um, that is a uh, student financial management center function. Um, and so if you have specific questions about health insurance, you know, we're happy to field those or get you to the right person um, if you have more questions. Um, if there's anything that I'm missing, uh, also for, uh, we also provide general assistance for students who are identified as student of concern. So again, if a student is experiencing some type of mental health issue or other issue, Again, we're here to support them and help them navigate through that semester and beyond. So if you have anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're here to consult with you um, and to help you get through. And that's pretty much it. All right, I, uh, my name is Jeff Benson. Um, I think I'm up next, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, if you do have any questions from Dean, for the Dean of Students folks, make sure you're tossing them in the chat and they can still answer those questions for you. But uh, to keep the, to keep things rolling, um, again, my name is Jeff Benson. I'm the Interim Associate um, Director of Student Life on the Atlanta campus, meaning that I work with student organizations, fraternity, sorority life, and the Spotlight Programs Board. Um, today, I'm gonna talk to you mainly about uh, my work with student organizations and opportunities you can have to get involved there. Um, to do that, I'm gonna share my screen here quick and take you to one of our better tools for connecting with student organizations, which is the Panther Involvement Network or PIN. Um, hopefully you all have heard of this uh, system and have used it, but I wanted to, to bring you here uh, in case you haven't had the opportunity. So the URL is really easy to remember, pin.gsu.edu, PIN. Um, Panther Involvement Network. Um, in this, the best way to get the resources right away is to sign in right away. Um, it's gonna ask you just to use your campus ID and password. Once you're in here, you'll be able to see um, a lot more tools for you as a student to stay involved um, with student organizations or get involved with them if you're not. A um, Couple of cool things about the homepage here is once you join different organizations, they, they will show up for you so you can easily navigate to them. You'll be able to see any upcoming events that your organization or other organizations have coming up, as well as um, news that student organizations or departments wanna share with you. 
Uh, the, the best way to get involved with organizations is really to just kind of browse for things that you're interested in. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is click our organizations tab right here. Um, once you're in there, you can search for whatever you want to, whether it be an org name or um, just something you like to do. So for instance, for me, I'm a big sports fan. So I'm just going to type in sports and see what pops up and you'll see a lot of different sports uh, groups that pop up for me. Um, you can do that again with whatever your interests are. Once you find an organization you like, and since this group is putting on the event today, I'm just going to use Greatest Minds as um, our example. Um, when you click in, you'll be able to see kind of what's going on with that organization. So you'll see a brief description. Um, as you can see in their description, they gave you all of their different um, Facebook, Instagram handles, Twitter handle, things like that. You can also click on the links if they have added those to the system here. You'll also find an email address and phone number for those, or, uh, or at least an email address for every single organization on here so that you can reach out to them. Um, another thing you have the opportunity to do is you can click on this little contact button. That'll send a message to the organization saying that you want to get in touch with them. Or if you're really bold and you just know, I want to join Greatest Minds, you can go ahead and click this join button and they'll get a request saying that you want to join their organization organization so that they can either follow up with you or add you to their organization roster here in the Panther Involvement Network system. Um, you'll also be able to see officers that they have um, as well as their upcoming events for that page, things like that. Um, if you are looking for just something to do um, on campus or virtually, I also encourage you to look through our events postings here. This is where you'll see a lot of events put on by both departments and student organizations. Again, you can search by keyword, you can search by date and time that you're available. And one thing when we're back fully on campus um, that I really encourage you to do is to use this perks button down here on the side. Here you'd be able to search for group for events that either have free food or free stuff involved. So again, when we're kind of past the pandemic or at least back uh, more fully on campus and organizations are doing more on campus events, I do suggest you go ahead and check this free food button and see if there's any free meals coming up for you um, in your near future. Um, I know that that's sometimes a draw for you all. Um, it's a draw for myself as well, to be honest. Um, other, The last thing I wanted to point out with this system is that you can also look for service events if you want to get involved. So we have a very strong partnership with the Civic Engagement Office, um, and there are wonderful ways for you to get uh, involved with service by, again, just searching the service opportunities that they have. Um, note that a lot of these are still in person, and they're all are ultra also virtual opportunities for you um, when it comes to finding service opportunities. Um, similarly, when it comes to student organizations, um, admittedly, a lot of organizations are still trying to figure out how to handle COVID and how to continue to keep students involved and active, but most are putting on regular virtual um, events or meetings, and there are a few that are still meeting in person using social distancing um, here on campus. So again, we just really encourage you to check out this Panther Involvement Network system, find some groups that you may be interested in, and you can get again get connected with them by finding their page and reaching out to them that way or finding an event that they're putting on and either showing up to it virtually or showing up in person. Um, and, and I will go ahead and just uh, drop that uh, link in the chat, but if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I want to make sure that our next presenters can get started. Hi, I'm Laverne Perry. I am the Assistant Director of Artist Relations and Education Programs at the Rialto Center. We are across the street from the Adderhole Building, and we are one of the stops on the Panther Shuttle. So if you're not familiar with where we are, the purple route, and I believe the red route stops right in front of our building. Now, the Rialto Center is offering three online services that we're extremely proud of. The first is our Homegrown Series. The Rialto Homegrown series features a variety of free, short virtual performances by local artists on our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, our Homegrown series airs every other Thursday at noon. Um, our next online program is the Feed Your Senses Monthly Lunch and Learn Concert Series. Um, it's our Monthly Lunch and Learn Concert Series that used to take place in our lobby pre-COVID. 
And this takes place every third Wednesday of the month. It now takes place on our Facebook live stream and our other social media pages. It also airs on YouTube and the GSU TV channel after it airs on Facebook Live. Now, Feed Your Senses provides an insider's look at an artist's craft, and it features local performances. And again, it, it takes place on our live stream and our Facebook every third Wednesday of the month. Finally, we have Crucial Conversations, and it also takes place on our social media sites as well as YouTube. And it's a televised six part series of civil nonpartisan discussions involving students, faculty, university leaders, and others. And it's focused ultimately on a single question What are we going to do? Racial equality, reconciliation, and solutions drive these discussions aimed at the Georgia State University community, Atlanta, and the nation. And actually, George, I'm going to call you out right now. Um, George participated in one of our tapings last week that is going to be aired pretty soon. So please stay tuned to the Rialto's website and social media pages to find out when that airs. Crucial Conversations is moderated by Douglas Blackman, who is a professor at Georgia State University's Creative Media and Industries Institute, CMII for short. He's also the Pulitzer Prize winning author of Slavery by Another Name. This series, airs the second Sunday and Wednesday of each month at 8 and 11 p.m. on GPB channel 8.3. It's called the Knowledge Channel as well. And on Xfinity Comcast, it airs on channel 246 as well as our social media platforms. Now, if you're taking classes, this is for the students. If you're taking classes, maybe in music appreciation and you need concert credit, Please speak with your instructor to find out if you can attend one of our online offerings for your concert credit attendance. Um, once COVID is over, we'll be able to host you in person. And when we're able to go back to our regular scheduled events, we do offer $5 tickets for select performances for students with your Panther card. Um, we also have a Rialto Student Ambassador Program where you can work closely with the Rialto on events. Unfortunately, right now, we're not able to do that, but when we're able to do that, we would love to have you. And I'm going to pass it on to the next presenter. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nicole Turner. I am the associate co-associate director of the Georgia State Writing Studio. Um, I'm also a PhD student in English at Georgia State. Uh, so for the students in here, I empathize with the sort of struggle of being a student during all of uh, what's been going on at the college. Um, I want to show you and bring you to our website a little bit and speak to what we are offering online currently for students. Um, and this is be continuing to grow throughout the semester as we rise to this occasion. Um, um, but if you haven't been to the writing studio previously, or if you haven't visited our website before, um, it's writingstudio.gsu.edu. Uh, you could Google GSU Writing Studio, it'll come up just the same. Um, and we currently are offering appointments there via our online write chat platform. You don't need to download anything. Um, you don't need to really do much besides show up and create an account to log in and make an appointment. Um, there's a video on here that you can watch that very uh, quickly shows you how to do that, so I won't use up time now showing you how to do that bit. Um, I also wanted to take you through some of the different resources we offer that you could take advantage of. Um, one of these is a, a growing set of handouts on different concepts of the writing, uh, from academic writing to professional writing to job market writing. Um, these are, things are all available for you to visit and click through on our website. Um, additionally, if you're interested in making an appointment with one of our tutors who um, are comprised of uh, either master students or graduate students in English at Georgia State, um, you can click on our Meet the Staff section, and there you can find um, bio bios on all of our different tutors. Uh, maybe you can find a tutor that maybe specializes in something that you're interested in, uh, or if you're doing some maybe personal creative writing, finding a creative writer as a tutor could be really beneficial. Um, so you could scroll through here and find a tutor that works best for you. Um, for undergraduate students, appointments are 
25 minutes long. For graduate students, they're 55 minutes long, and you can create one appointment per day, but uh, as many times in the week as uh, you would like. Um, so you can come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and we'll be starting weekend hours soon as well. Um, some of the things I'd just like to mention about the studio before um, I pass the torch over to the next person uh, is that we really will work on absolutely anything you want to bring to the studio. I've worked on dissertations, class papers, Tinder profiles, um, and really everything in between. And so the idea of the studio is that you can come here to think about writing, but also improve who how you work as a writer. Um, we've helped students work through assignment sheets that were confusing. Uh, we do brainstorming. We, do, we help with drafting. We help in those final revision stages. Um, and the idea is that you'll work with a peer tutor, not a teacher or someone during office hours, but somebody who's also a student at Georgia State. Um, and together you can work through whatever writing challenges you're facing, whether it's writer's block or confusion or anything in between. Um, so hopefully uh, you would come in and make an appointment with the studio. Um, again, it's, it's simple, free, easy to access. Um, and we are excited to talk with you uh, in the studio. I think the next person. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. My screen just froze. Yes, George, if it looks like it's coming back up. Let's see. If the next person can go, I should be ready in about two minutes. It just froze and it's warming back up. I'm so sorry. Wait. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Hidra Hamid. I'm an the Access Coordinator for Interpreting Service in the Access and Accommodation Center at Georgia State University. I have a presentation I'd like to share with you. Please. Oh, there we Sorry, just one moment. Let's see, did we lose our next, did we lose my backup also? I'm back up, George, if you want me to go ahead and go. Yes, if you could go for okay. me and then I'll be set once you go. Thank you. We got set, that's fine. The <laughs> Zoom has been cooperating. Um, until now, so we can't complain. It's been cooperating for most of this session. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Erica Bracey, and I manage Launch GSU, our student business incubator, and I'm going to not move to avoid my computer going down again. Launch GSU is your student business incubator for all the panthropreneurs on campus. This is the place where as I mentioned, panthropreneurs that either have an existing business or are looking to start a business can come and work and grow their business with their team, with their group. Um, we are located at 58 Edgewood, which is behind CMII, and we are open. We have put practices in place so that we can operate safely for all of you. And the beautiful part is everyone's been cooperating, which allows us to stay open. Launch GSU is a space where you see here, we operate as a workspace. Normally, pre and post COVID, we are a meeting space, not so much right now, of course. Networking, we also provide coaching, mentoring, and other resources for aspiring and as well as existing um, students that have small businesses. Our main website is launch.gsu.edu. In addition to a place where you can come and work on your business, we also have a variety of training programs, which we've never stopped. And prior to COVID, all of our programs were live streamed, but of course many students didn't take advantage of that. But now everyone really is embracing, of course, the virtual platform just because you guys have no choice. But people are now taking advantage and expanding 
things that they had been doing previously. Um, so we encourage you to please take a look. If you have not seen the calendar, and it always blows my mind every semester how many students are not familiar with the calendar, you see the website here, calendar.gsu.edu. That's the main university calendar, and then the page to direct you to all of the launch events is forward slash launch GSU. So you will find all of the business-related, entrepreneur-related um, events here at this site, calendar.gsu.edu. We have some exciting programming coming up for the month of October. We have a full schedule for October, starting with tomorrow. We have an event tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m., Understanding personal credit, the success of business is often tied to personal credit because you may need financing for your small business. And even though you are in need of, biz of business credit, it all ties back and goes back to your personal credit. So if you are interested in finding out the importance of personal credit and what you can do and learning a little bit more, I invite you to join us tomorrow at 4 p.m. You'll find the link to register for our programming, again, at this website. And I just want to share, again, Launch is a place where you can come and work on your business. And similar to the library, we are open. Of course, it's reduced capacity and in heightened um, sanitation and procedures, but we're here. However, Launch is um, membership required. There's no fee to join. We just need to have people apply because we want to make sure that we maintain the integrity of the business element here at Launch GSU. So if you're interested, all you need to do is um, go to our website, launch.gsu.edu, and you would apply. You would simply complete a very, very brief application. Our membership campaign runs for the first few weeks of each semester. So as you see here, it opened on August 24th, and the last day that we will accept applications for the fall membership is this Friday, Friday, October 2nd. Friday, October 2nd, at 6 o'clock p.m., the application will be coming down and will not open back up until the second week in January. So if you have a small business or are really seriously interested in starting a small business, I would strongly encourage you to go online complete the application and go ahead and become a member this semester so that when we do get back on campus, um, you'll ha already have all of that taken care of. I will put my email address in the chat and thank you guys so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you, too, seeing you soon. So hello again, everyone. My name is Hidra Hamad. I'm the um, Access Coordinator for Interpreting Services in the Access and Accommodation Center. We used to be known as the Office of Disability Services, but we uh, changed our name last year to better align with our uh, mission and goals. And that is building a culture of care through primarily access, providing opportunities to obtain information and utilize resources integrity, promoting equitable learning environments, and inclusion, creating purposeful and engaged cultural experiences. So I do wanna say, when people think of disability services or accommodations, they often think of people with mobility issues. So if you're using a wheelchair, or if you have some kind of learning disability, such as um, dyslexia or um, ADHD. But there are, um, a wide range of disabilities that we can provide accommodations for, including psychological disabilities. If it's difficult for you to get your work done um, according to your teacher's schedule because you have bipolar disorder, or perhaps you have anxiety, and so you have you are unable to do public speaking, and we can make accommodations based on that. Um, it's not just extended time on testing or making sure you have a desk big enough for your wheelchair. We are about including um, students with disabilities 
uh, and in integrating them into Georgia State as a whole. It's not only services inside the classroom, you can also request accommodations, such as if a speaker is coming to the Spotlight series and you have a hearing loss and you would like a sign language interpreter or captioning for an event at Georgia State, you contact us and let us know and we can provide that for you. I do want to clarify for everyone on the call that we are responsible for student accommodations and accommodations for visitors to the university. We are not responsible for faculty or staff accommodations. So what can we do for you now that we're in this online environment? Everything that we did before, just in a more convenient fashion for you since we can't be all together. Um, we have all of our forms that we used to have, um, paper, um, versions of in our office that we were used to require to be printed can now be submitted electronically. That includes the initial disclosure form to join our um, our office and get to see, talk to a coordinator. A testing request form in order to have accommodated testing. We are still doing testing in our office that's socially distanced um, and sanitized situations. We can also um, we have phone and web appointments, so if you would like to meet with a coordinator, such as me or uh, one of my colleagues, then we are doing that primarily through WebEx meetings. Uh, your camera isn't required to be on during our meetings, so we can just have a regular phone call, but it will just be hosted through WebEx. We are also doing virtual interpreting and captioning services, so we have several students who use those um, services for their classes, and if you're having online meetings, we can still provide those services, you just have to let us know and be in touch with us. And again, online proctoring. So if you um, need a test proctored, but for some reason your assistive technology maybe doesn't mesh well with um, lockdown browser, then we can remove the lockdown browser requirement and have a member of our office proctor your test. And that's just an example of, uh, of, of one of many services that we can provide virtually. We are also um, available on campus primarily by appointment. Um, we do have people who can come into office, but they're not always there every day. Um, so the what well, if you do come into our office, we are following the masking protocol that is across all Georgia State campuses. So you must wear a mask while you're in our office. And also um, we are employing social distancing practices as well. Uh, this is our contact information. We do have a presence on every major campus. So the Atlanta campus and then each of the uh, perimeter college campuses has their own office, but we do all work together. So if you reach out to me, I actually work with, with students on all six campuses as the interpreting coordinator. I interpret in the classroom and um, manage accommodations primarily for students with uh, hearing loss. Um, but if you reach out to someone on the Dunwoody campus, but really you needed help on Alpharetta, we're not just gonna say, well, reach out to Alpharetta, we'll help you get where you need to go. So um, I'll stop sharing my screen now. And I think I saw some questions pop up. Um, how can you test if you think you have a learning disability and how to request an accommodation for a student? So if you suspect that you may have a learning disability, but you don't have the resources or know how to uh, take advantage of the resources that you may have in your personal life, then absolutely reach out to us. We have an organization called the Regis Center for Learning Disorders. It's a university system of Georgia organization. One of their offices is based on the Atlanta campus and they actually do testing for um, the Georgia State community. And so if you suspect you have a learning disorder but don't have access to a doctor on your own, reach out to us and we can help coordinate that for you. And as far as requesting accommodations, just contact our, our email address and our um, website are very similar. Our email address is access at gsu.edu and our website is access.gsu.edu. So if you visit there, you're welcome to contact us. If you're a professor and you feel like you may have a student who has a disability, but they haven't disclosed that to you, then you can refer them to our office as well. And we're welcome to have a conversation with anyone. Um, my information is in the chat, but again, access.gsu.edu or access at gsu.edu is the best way to get in touch with us. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Um, just want to really thank everyone for coming out today. Um, I wanted to know if there are any questions from the students. Um, I do want to share uh, Greatest Minds new website that just got uh, put together by the students. I hope you like it. Ms. Bracey, I hope you like this. It is uh, www.gminds.org. Different testimonials and recent things going forward. So uh, I just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, any questions for any of the students, please jump right in. Any questions? I, I do have a question. George, thanks for, for, first of all, for doing this and creating an opportunity for this in, in, in interaction. So here's a question for our students. The leadership programs office is, is working on in-person uh, networking, greet and meet uh, opportunities. And, and one of the things that we're working to figure out is what works for best for students? What will make them more comfortable being, while social distancing, being in, in shared spaces uh, like our upcoming um, meet and greet? Anybody want to jump in? Does anyone want to type it out? <laughs> so I see I see uh, a, a chat statement asking me to repeat the question. Okay. What will what what should student what should departments and student organizations organizations consider when when planning in person events? So that students would be willing to come, essentially. Anybody? <laughs> oh. Was your question about in-person events, Kirk? Yes. Yeah, so and I'm talking beyond training sessions because we host training sessions both virtually and in person, and they've been well received. What we're working on and what we're working to best understand when it comes to more social events like this networking event that we're planning over the next uh, few weeks, the first of which is this week, we're wanting to design it in such a way that it will appeal to the broadest to as many students as possible to attend an in-person meet and greet event. I can just share, we've been approached to, here at launch, we've been approached to host in-person events and I'm just, I'm, I'm not hosting any in-person events at my office. As a result of this conversation with this other group, they decided to host an event outside at Piedmont Park and I asked my student assistants, the event is outside and they're doing social distancing. And would she be just, I was just curious, would she be interested in attending? How comfortable does she feel attending an event outside? And my student assistant said, even with the social distancing and the mass required, she just was not ready. Okay. She, she's not so just sharing what, you know, what the student, what my students are saying. Yeah, and that's insightful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Impressive website, George, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have very smart, smart, smart young people at Georgia State working with me, which is very good. I'm very proud of them. Um, thank you guys for coming to this. Um, again, we really thank you for uh, participating in the Greatest Minds event, but we also thank all the offices um, that were listed here today. Um, we will put this up on the web. 
Um, and um, we will have a link, a YouTube web, so people can share it on their own pages and so forth. But also we plan to put it in a several of the group meetings and so forth. Um, again, thank you for the friends at Greatest Minds. Uh, thank you for the students that are here. And um, any students, um, I know we're going to have a, a discussion after at 3 o'clock for any students that are um, that are in my class and so forth. I'd like to stay. They're more so. So um, please, please, please give me a hello. And today we are actually finalizing and closing out this out. So thank you so much. And also, I do have these page um, one pagers that several of y'all filled out. So um, I will send it back to you. And when I actually send out the final um, video, I plan to have the one pagers there so they can use that as well as a thing. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, any students in my class, please stay. <laughs>